The Sangam literature Tamil, Kanka Alakiyam, Sangha Alakiyam, is the ancient Tamil literature of the period in the history of ancient southern India known as the Thamilagam or the Tamilagam spanning from c. 300 BCE to 300 CE 1, 15, 31, 55, 61, 65, 91, 97, 101, 115, 127, 187, 197, 201, 211, 233, 251, 265, 281, 311, 325, 331, 347, 349, 359, 300 293, 281, 295, Karunthagai 11, Natrinai 14, 75 are dated before 300 BCE. This collection contains 2,381 poems in Tamil composed by 473 poets, some 102 of whom remain anonymous. Most of the available Sangam literature is from the Third Sangam. This period is known as the Sangam period, which refers to the prevalent Sangam legends claiming literary academies lasting thousands of years, giving the name to the corpus of literature. The only religious poems among the shorter poems occur in Paripadal. The rest of the corpus of Sangam literature deals with human relationship and emotions. C.K.A. Nilakanta Sastri, A History of South India, OUP, 1955, pp. 330-335 The poems belonging to Sangam literature were composed by Tamil poets, both men and women, from various professions and classes of society. These poems were later collected into various anthologies, edited, and with colophons added by anthologists and annotators around 1000 AD. Sangam literature fell out of popular memory soon thereafter, until they were rediscovered in the 19th century by scholars such as Arumuga Navalar, C. W. Thamatharampillai and U. V. Swaminatha Iyer. Sangam literature deals with emotional and material topics such as love, war, governance, trade and bereavement. Some of the greatest Tamil scholars, like Thiruvallavar, who wrote on ethics, and on the various issues of life like virtue, wealth and love, or the Tamil poet Mamulanar, who explored historical incidents that happened in India, lived during the Sangam period. The Indologist Kamil Zavelabil quotes A. K. Ramanujan, in their antiquity and in their contemporaneity, there is not much else in any Indian literature equal to these quiet and dramatic Tamil poems. In their values and stances, they represent a mature classical poetry. Passion is balanced by courtesy, transparency by ironies and nuances of design, impersonality by vivid detail, austerity of line by richness of implication. These poems are not just the earliest evidence of the Tamil genius. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Compilation of literature. The available literature from this period was categorized and compiled in the 10th century into two categories based roughly on chronology. The categories are the Patanenmelkanaku, the 18 greater text series, comprising the Etuthagai, eight anthologies, and the Patupatu, ten idols, and the Patanenkilkanaku, the 18 lesser text series. Topic. Classification Sangam poems falls into two categories, the inner field akam akam, and the outer field purim purim, as described even in the first available Tamil grammar, the Tolkapiam. The inner field topics refer to personal or human aspects, such as love and intimate relationships, and are dealt with metaphorically and abstractly. The outer field Topics discuss all other aspects of human experience such as heroism, courage, ethics, benevolence, philanthropy, social life, and customs. The division into agam and purim is not rigid, but depends upon the interpretation used in a specific context. <laughs> environmental classifications Sangam literature illustrates the thematic classification scheme first described in the Tolkapiam. The classification ties the emotions involved in Akam poetry to a specific landscape. These landscapes are called Tinai. Tin These are, Karinchi, Karinchi mountainous regions, Mulai, Mulai forests, Marudam, Marudam agricultural land, Natal, Natal coastal regions, Palai, Palai deserts. 
In addition to the landscape-based tinae, kaikali and paranthenai are used for unsolicited love and unsuited love, respectively. Similar tinae pertain to Purim poems as well, though these categories are based on activity rather than landscape. Vechi, Karanthai, Vanshi, Kanshi, Ujane, Nochchi, Thumbai, Vagai, Patan, and Pothavial. Tamil Sangams According to the compilers of the Sangam works such as Nakiran, the Tamil Sangams were academies, where Tamil poets and authors are said to have gathered periodically to publish their works. The legends claim that the Pandyan dynasty of the mythical cities of South Madurai, Kapadapuram, and Madurai patronized the three Sangams. While these claims of the Sangams and the description of sunken land masses Kumari Kondam have been dismissed as frivolous by historiographers, Sangam literature is still the preferred term for referring to the collection of Tamil works from the period 200 BC to 200 AD. Noted historians like Camille Zavelabiel have stressed that the use of Sangam literature to describe this corpus of literature as a misnomer and classical literature should be used instead. Rediscovery The works of Sangam literature were lost and forgotten for several centuries before they were brought to light by several Tamil scholars, such as Arumuka Navalar, C. W. Thamotharampillai and U. V. Swaminatha Iyer. They painstakingly collected and catalogued numerous manuscripts in various stages of deterioration. Navalar and Pillai hailed from Jaffna. Navalar brought the first Sangam text into print, this was the Tirumaruka Atupadai one of the ten idols, in 1851. Pillai brought out the first of the eight anthologies of the Sangam classics, the Kalithakai, in 1887. Swaminathayar published his first print of the Ten Idols in 1889. Together, these scholars printed and published Tholkapiyam, Nishinarkaniyar Urai, Tholkapiyam Senavariyar Urai, Manamekalai, Salapadikaram, Patupatu, and Purananaru, all with scholarly commentaries. They published more than 100 works in all, including minor poems. J. V. Chelaya of Jaffna College did the entire translation of the Ten Idols in English in 1945. See also Tamilakam First Sangam Second Sangam Tamil Sangams List of Sangam poets